I, I think I forgot to put in the supplement because I lost it, and it's somewhere. Tom was supposed to walk off and whip a bottle and break it in half of uh, the Chango beer. Oh, and yeah. And he does it in one shot, and it's great. We put the bottle, you know, across the room, and the camera was right there in front of the bottle. He turned around, see one bottle left standing in the bar, and whip it and break it. And it's such a great shot, and Tom's just so good with a whip. <laughs> and it got left out because it didn't fit in through all the dialogue. He kept doing it take after take. <laughs> I went ahead and uh, added some scenes that were cut out of the movie or just uh, alternate takes. This right here is uh, something, this is just a goofy thing. This is uh, McGraw Lives. One of the takes on uh, on Pete here, I, ha I didn't call cut. I wanted just to see what would happen, have him keep talking. I wanted to see McGraw actually get his beer and leave and uh, and, uh, and live in case we wanted to do a sequel or something. We could show <laughs> an alternate uh, an alternate universe of him actually getting away and living. So here we go. They're just making this dialogue up, and he takes off. See ya. Gets away, and they're all laughing. They're like, hey, what's going on? This was a great scene. I like this scene. This was, I was particularly proud of it, because I was doing all the steady cam work on this. And uh, this is actually the last the last day of shooting. It was a difficult steady cam shot for me, because I'm not a great steady cam guy, and I had to go all the way over and push in all the way in on his mouth. And um, we just didn't need the scene in the movie. The movie was too long. I wanted to cut it shorter. This comes right after the introduction of the family in the diner, before George goes back with the burgers and finds the dead body. This is what he's doing. We did about ten takes of that. It was George just kept, you know, forgetting that difficult dialogue line. Right at the end, there's some tongue twister they forget. And here we come into uh, scenes that were cut out. These were just trims. Like I trimmed this part just for pace, like one of the faces of the of the ladies. Um, some more stuff of. Uh, Here's a little bit longer. This was the original cut of the uh, throat slit. It was a little bit longer. They they had me cut it for purposes of MPA. Just a few frames. Not cut it, just trim it. Her throwing the head. Here's a... Uh, who's ever there? That's that Wayne Toth, who gets his throat bit. Which was nice about that, because we actually had a tube in the mouth, and it sprayed blood and covered the camera. That's why the the, the lens turns red. Right, yeah, that looked in great. That shot. This is all just more miscellaneous biting. Look at blood I liked oozing all that out blood. of everybody. Some of these kills were really... And there's Gino. Gino Crugnali. Gino's he was sitting with a beautiful girl before, and then turned into the mouth bitch. And uh, she's got like a real warty tone. Oh, there was Selma waking up and, and slithering away. We shot that in reverse. Right. Oh, there you are. And this is my You're death. Hanging out by the band like a real rock and roller. And That's then right. Selma came and sat on your lap, which you seem to enjoy for, I guess, of course, a couple like hours. Minutes. Yeah. And then she was supposed to turn into some creature comes out of her mouth and bites your head off everybody kept saying why are you in the movie but we never see you get killed and i was like oh trust me it'll be in the laser disc <laughs> this is just more of george just sort of bashing and killing people but oh, here we right. go when he got on the table he saw this big thing she was saying you know she was like enticing him and starting to hypnotize him or whatever and she grabs this guy oh. and this is an old high school gag i had in one of my old high school movies that i brought back for this which is a <laughs> giant pimple in the face it's always a cheap reaction all this stuff was cut just for for pace purposes, which is why you see him just turn around and see Salma. What happened was originally he saw, he saw this thing, and he's just starting to freak out of all the stuff that's going on. This was a, this was our another tribute to John Carpenter and the, <laughs> the thing. thing. Um, the, the Gino's opener. head gets shoved in and then <laughs> bitten off. Bitten off in there, and that was actually one of the first designs that you brought up to us. You oh, brought us that little sort of gremlin creature, and some chick with a mouth in her stomach, and I thought. You know, this is somebody's worst nightmare is finding a real pretty girl and then having her turn into a creature. Right then he turns around and sees Salma, so that's what happened there. Before he gets punched, that's where that fit in. Poor Gina. This is head. a great line. <laughs> this is Tom Savini had a great little piece of business there that I cut out just for pace as well, where he goes, let's go, you know, stake these fuckers. And there's just some extra stuff here with, uh, with uh, them trying to put out the fire and intercut with a... With a bat style. I had an, another bat sequence that I didn't have time to cut together. I never cut it because I always knew that I was going to cut it out once we had shot it and had shot the bat, shot the rat sequence. I knew the rat would take over the bat sequence. It's just more of a. This is Howard getting his head bashed in even more. This than is what we originally it. looked like, and it was really great. Got a great reaction from the crowd, but the MPA said it was too much because they thought it was a woman with a long hair. <laughs> they weren't <laughs> sure. They thought it was an ugly chick with a beard. They said, "Don't want to show that much violence towards women." Oh, this is the great t Savini action. He had more action after this, which was uh, there's Wayne. Okay, this Norman. is when this is when all these guys are starting to come back from the dead. Norman Cabrera and Wayne Toth, who are two of the K and B guys, stand yes. up, and they're all badass, ready to fight Savini, and he just kicks their ass. And he says, "Goddamn fucking vampires!" Stabs Wayne, and then he actually he always 
Tom is always taking pictures. <laughs> he, he loves keeping souvenirs or everything, so I don't take a picture of one this of the is, dead bodies. This is Brian Ray. He's another K&B guy. There's some, dead there's some neat stuff here, some just sort of generic... Uh, Vamps getting hit oh, in the yeah. head with with arrows. Oh, this is this was cool. This is right after she saved him from the from the rat, and got that guy in the head. That was that was cool. 